Guys, I am sorry to bring this up again, but in regards to this lawsuit, when it comes to Nintendo's possibilities of winning this lawsuit, if you do your research, the possibility gets worse and worse against Nintendo. So here we are again with more proof that the Pokemon Company and Nintendo can't win this lawsuit. Shout out goes to Snintendog for pointing this out. Thank you Snintendog for telling me this. In my last video, I talked about how long a patent lasts. Now it doesn't matter where the patent is in the world, it always lasts the same, 20 years. What I said in my last video though, is that in America, if the invention in question is not patented for 20 years, that is public domain. What's Nintendo pointed out to me though, is that in Japan however, you have only one year to file a patent before it becomes public domain. Now in my second video on this topic of Nintendo's lawsuit against Power World, I highlighted Craftopia. The Pokemon company filed a lot of patents after the release of Power World. It sounds illegal, but it leads to one killer parent patent that was filed in 2021, where you have to throw it out to catch a creature in an open field. Apparently, this patent was filed for Pokemon Legends Arceus. But Legends Arceus came out in 2022. Meanwhile, Craftopia came out in 2020, two years before we got Legends Arceus. That means it was Pocket Pair that actually invented this game mechanic, and that Game Freak basically capitalized it when they made Legends Arceus. If you seen my first video on this topic, before you type down in the comments to remind me about Genshin Impact, that is a count, that game came from China. What I'm trying to say is that thanks to Craftopia, Power will be saved. Cause Craftopia basically uses the same game mechanics as Power World. Basically, Craftopia is Power World's predecessor because it uses the same game mechanics as Power World, but was released 4 years earlier. As litigious Nintendo's ninjas are, they had just messed up. Because there was no way Pokemon's or Nintendo's ninjas could have neglected on Craftopia. They had to know about it. They had to know about Craftopia. Which would imply they ignored it on purpose and hoped that Pocket Pen would have forgotten about Craftopia with the success of Power World. But no, Nintendo's ninjas would never do that. Nintendo's ninjas would never be that stupid. Right? Right? Well, by means of this lawsuit, they did. The point is, Craftopia predicted Legends Arceus' mechanics. Me, the mechanics used in Legends Arceus are public domain. Let's count all the crimes Nintendo and the Pokemon Company committed when they filed this lawsuit and prepared it. Number 1. Patent Abuse Filing multiple patents after Power's release, especially after Craftopia's release. I count those killer parent patents as patent trolling and patent fraudulent. Due to be filed after Craftopia, of course, that's 2 and 3. Number 4 is repeated invalid patents of what we know about all these patents. And invalid patents alone are illegal in Japan. Number 5 is abuse of legal power no matter what the circumstances are, even if it's online, which Nintendo does all the time. So that means Nintendo should be shut down because they've been abusing their legal power all this time. Number 6 is in violation of Japan's code of honor involving patents. Nintendo broke this code of honor by filing a patent for the invention of a game and character that Pocket Pair invented. Number 7 is breaking Japan's one year grace period which is what Nintendo stopped another company from doing. And I already talked about that in my second video on this topic. And now they're doing what that company had done. Number 8 is bad fate. And number 9 is unfair competition. And finally, number 10 is making an attempt to use the law to make a monopoly on the monster TV genre. When Yokai Watch and Digimon was popular, why didn't the Pokemon Company and Nintendo go after them? Why didn't they go after Level 5 or Bam Dynamical over their Monster TV titles? Remember, those two were popular, just like Power World is now. And yet the Pokemon Company and Nintendo decided to leave them alone. I guess it's because Satoru Wad was in charge at that time. Wait a minute, Forward was in charge when we got Mega Evolutions, copied from Digimon, and then when it comes to the anime, the anime's art style copied Yokai Watch's anime art style, starting with Sun and Moon. So what happened? What changed? Why does Pokemon no longer tolerate being copied anymore so they can copy back? One thing's for sure, this is Vexus Litigations. That's what Nintendo is trying to do. And that's illegal too, especially in Japan. Who knows how many walls are gonna sting Nintendo after this. They kicked a bear and now they're going to suffer. They already spent a lot of money on this lawsuit. Not only are they gonna lose more, but also lose their market share. Nintendo and the Pokemon Company stand no chance against Power World. Or Pocket Pair. They'll get shut down as a result and actively kill themselves and their own business. By trying to get rid of a healthy and fair and legal competition, both these giant corporations will lose a chunk of what they value most, especially their own IP. When that happens, 
That's a good thing, because once Nintendo goes out of business, we can make as much as fan games as much as we want, and won't get any takedowns. And that is a bright path for the future of gaming.